I'm an architect and I'm here today to talk a little bit about what we do. We start with sites like these <clears throat> and we remove what gets in the way. We put up buildings what? that consume a lot of resources yeah. and are quite toxic. And um, really, every architect today needs to be a little bit green. And we do that by minimizing Thank our negative impact. This is an approach called MINI. Yeah. So here I am, working very hard to minimize my negative impact. On a good day, I might pepper the project with solar panels and then remove a few more trees for an electric car. And I get a green building certification for it. Now, I'm on the cutting edge of contemporary architecture. So what I had before was a bad building, and what I have today is a better building, which really is just a less bad building. This is the equivalent of having a whole bunch of doctors standing around a person and marveling at the low levels of mercury, uh, PCBs, fat in that person, until somebody comes around and notes that that person is dead. Now, I have a radical idea, and it goes like this. If a person is dead, the rest doesn't really matter. And the same is true for green building. If we've killed the site, the rest doesn't really matter. So if we start with this here, all we're doing as architects is we're displacing the ground plane. If we're really clever, we shift it a little further and we create even more green space. Now if I apply this to what the world really looks like today, brown fields, and I start with dead sites and I bring them up to this level, suddenly I'm being regenerative. I want more buildings, as many buildings as I can possibly get and suddenly, I'm designing almost as intelligently as nature does. We've spent eight years mapping this out, first with materials and now with architecture. It's turned into a bit of a genome project, um, mapping the DNA of how nature designs. We call this project RESET, Regenerative Ecological, Social, and Economic Targets. Because we like a challenge, we've done it in our adoptive country of China. Now, here's a dead site, or almost dead site, on the side of the Yangtze River. It had two kinds of trees, um, one frog, it was made from river dredge and polluted fish ponds. This is it before, and this is it fully regenerated. So what we've done is increased habitat, uh, increased biodiversity, sequestered carbon, and when you start designing with nature, you can start doing pretty crazy things like inputting dirty water, and what comes out the other end is clean water and topsoil. Suddenly, I want to use this project as much as I possibly can. Then we take these ideas and we move them downtown. This is a project in Shanghai, um, where the rooftop regenerates the original wetlands that used to be in Shanghai. So this serves birds passing through. It serves, more importantly, to filter the water of the building below. And in the process of doing this, we end up with 25% more green space with the building than if we didn't have it. Now we take all these ideas and we start inputting it into our genome project. And suddenly we realize it's going to take us a thousand years to fill this genome project. That's not so good. So the good news is that there's thousands of designers working on exactly these ideas around the world. So we've spent the past four years making this open source so that we can collect the best ideas from the world's leading pioneers and host them here. Once we've filled out this entire genome project, we'll be designing almost as intelligently as nature does. And we'll be compressing a thousand years of research in hopefully what's just a couple decades. All of a sudden, we won't be living in a world of minimization, but one of regeneration. Thank you very much.